Hi, and welcome uh, to this session, this lightning talk uh, at uh, Reactive Summit. So today I want to talk to you about uh, structured concurrency, a concept that uh, has emerged uh, in the uh, past few years, and make a parallel with reactive streams and, and explore if there is any common ground. Uh, but first, what is structured concurrency? Um, and where does it originate from? It, it, there are instances of it in several languages and libraries now, but it originates in uh, Python, uh, in a library called Trio um, in, back in 2018. Um, and Trio has a concept called um, a class called nursery, uh, the nursery pattern, which is an implementation, the original implementation of structured concurrency. The same year, um, Kotlin announced that they would adopt the concept for their coroutines. So they provide um, a scope for coroutines that is a form of structured concurrency. Then it was adopted in Swift as well um, in late 2021 uh, in the task uh, API, the new task, task API for async uh, programming. Uh, and uh, the Java team has been exploring concurren um, structured concurrency along Loom. So it's unclear at this point when, when Loom will land and whether or not it will actually have some concept of structured concurrency. That, that's something that they are interested in, at least. So what is uh, structured concurrency? Um, there is a concept of encapsulation of concurrent uh, threads of execution. So in structured concurrency, you want to encapsulate anything concurrent um, and make it uh, more digestible. Um, and for that, you need basically uh, a control flow construct. Another important concept um, is the fact that you have to deal with a single uh, construct, a single object. So in trio, that would be the nursery. In um, Swift, it would be the task. Um, in Kotlin, it would be the coroutine. So you simplify things by dealing with a single object. And this single object represents a hierarchy of steps um, that are spanned, spawned by the, the parent. So you could have a deep hierarchy where your um, single construct represents the whole uh, process, but it, it is divided in several, discrete, um, several steps that this parent spawns. And that hierarchy is, uh, is important, as we'll see later. Um, the fact that you have a hierarchy means that the, uh, the parent uh, task, if you will, only completes uh, when all tasks that it has spawned complete. So you cannot start a subtask and, and uh, exit immediately. It's, it's linked as part of the hierarchy. Um, it also means that errors are dealt by the parent. So errors in the, the, the child task uh, propagate to the parent and the parent has to deal with that or um, inform the user somehow. And the goal of all that is uh, to make the control flow of your asynchronous program uh, clear. So despite concurrency, you want to make things as clear as possible and not deal with locks and, and all that stuff uh, that, that gets like spawning new threads and synchronizing threads that, that gets very complicated very fast. Uh, another important aspect of uh, structured concurrency is the fact that Cancellation is part of um, the, 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 the whole setup. So if you cancel the parent, which is the single construct that you deal with as the user, um, it means that you it has to propagate to all the children. So cancelling is a one-off operation and, and it safely cancels every aspect of your uh, processing uh, hierarchy. And also, um, the hierarchy, the hierarchy makes it possible for um, all these tasks to share a common scope or a common set of metadata. So tasks that are spawned by the parent, they inherit the scope from the, their parent. And therefore, they can discover, for instance, um, share the same correlation ID or trace ID or anything like that. 
So yeah, um, today in this lightning talk, I wanted to make a, a parallel between these concepts that we just saw, uh, structured concurrency and reactive streams. Um, so we have the encapsulation of a uh, concurrent threads of the execution. Um, in reactive streams, we could argue that publisher is, uh, is doing that, it en encapsulate that. Um, with a small difference, with a small caveat, um, publisher are generally uh, combined to create an asynchronous pipeline. So you don't have, you don't have a single publisher. Uh, it's actually a combination of multiple publishers. Um, and this construct represents the control flow of your program. And publisher again is such a, a representation of the, the control flow. Uh, because the logical steps in your program are described as operators that are chained together. So again, small difference, but um, the concept is the same. And of course, as we saw, you deal with a single publisher. Um, and actually you deal with, you rather deal with a single subscription to a, a chain of operators, a chain of publisher in reactive streams. So when you chain operators, you actually describe the pipeline. So it's it's a descriptive action. Um, and so you create a chain of publishers and actually you deal with the last element of the chain, which is a wrapper around each previous step. Um, and you could weave in more steps if you want, but uh, you, you realize the pipeline when you actually subscribe to it. So you activate the pipeline by subscribing to it. And then you get... Um, kind of the subscription instance, uh, a reference. Uh, and you could do that several times. So the the single object is the subscription that you get. That's that's the actual uh, representation of, of one, um, one process, so to speak. Um, making a parallel with this hierarchy of steps, um, here we have a hierarchy of operators, which are part of the same pipeline. So each, each operator talks to the operator downstream of it and pushes messages to, to that, that operator until it reaches the user subscription and again pushes, um, pushes on next, on complete, on, on error signals to that subscriber. So in reactive streams, or at least in libraries like reactor, uh, steps are always explicitly represented as operators. So that makes the recipe for your processing pipeline even clearer in, in code. Um, we saw that in structured concurrency, um, child tasks, or rather the parent task never completes until all its child tasks have completed. It's the same in reactive streams, except it's represented by an, um, a dedicated signal, the uncomplete signal. So if you start, if, it, if that data starts flowing in the pipeline, uh, it's represented by on next events and uh, the source might complete and then some delay or additional processing steps are performed. And until these steps are also completed, uh, you won't get a, a non-complete signal as the subscriber at the end of the chain. Same for errors. Um, error propagate via the on error dedicated uh, signal, but they propagate through throughout the, the whole pipeline. And that may seem a bit different from uh, structured concurrency where we saw that uh, it, it, it was propagating from the child to the parent. Uh, here we we have an error that flows through the pipeline rather than propagating outwards. Also it's in, but if you look at the um, a chain of operators. Uh, you can actually, you can actually think of it as a chain, but also as a layered construct. So when you have a source that uh, propagates, like pushes elements to a map operator, and then a filter operator, and then to the subscriber, uh, uh, the subscribe step uh, from the user perspective, you actually have a publish uh, a layer uh, where you have the outermost. Uh, layer is the filter operator that wraps, actually wraps the map, which itself wraps the source. And so 
the, an error in the source would propagate outward to the map and then outward to the filter and then to the subscribe and the subscriber from the user. So actually it's, it's, it's the same. Um, in both cases, in reactive streams and in uh, structured concurrency, the fact that we want to make the control flow uh, as clear as possible despite concurrency is one of the main goals. So here we have the, the same, again, with operators representing a pipeline and, and describing the recipe of, of your pipeline. And again, cancellation in reactive streams is, is also um, a first class citizen. So as a user, you hold the subscription um, and you can cancel it at any time. And that cancellation signal will propagate upstream to uh, throughout the pipeline to the source. So each, each step in the pipeline, each operator gets a chance to uh, clean up state and uh, properly cancel uh, any processing that it might be doing still, and then cancels the source. So presentation differs in that case for cancellation, but it still cancel once uh, kind of, of deal. And um, finally, the, the, the notion that there could be, since there is a hierarchy, there, there would be inheritance sorry, of, of uh, scope from the parent um, is present in some libraries. So some li libraries like Reactor uh, introduce a notion of context um, for the pipeline. And they do so for um, a subscription, a particular subscription. So when you subscribe to uh, the pipeline as a publisher, uh, you can pass in some context. And bear in mind that you, again, you can subscribe multiple times to the same publisher and realize the pipeline multiple times. And you might want um, different contexts for each subscription. So um, that could be an ID, a correlation ID for a request, for instance, despite um, seeking the same data source, uh, you want still to attach that to a particular request. Uh, and that's what, what we attempt with uh, the context in, in Reactor. And that's it. So I think there is a lot of parallel uh, between the two, uh, between reactive streams and uh, structured concurrency. It's a different presentation, it's a different approach. Um, reactive streams libraries like uh, RxJava and Reactor are a bit more functional oriented. Uh, but they share a lot of the same goals and a lot of the same benefits between the two concepts. I hope that you uh, enjoy the rest of uh, this conference day. Um, there are a few talks around reactive programming uh, today, so I'd encourage you to watch uh, Ready Steady R2DBC, which is coming next after uh, this lightning talk. And uh, later on, in um, about an hour, there is uh, Project Loom, a friend of four of Reactive, a presentation by my colleague uh, Ole, that I also encourage you to, to watch. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. <laughs>